John Stewart actually asked Billy Crudup, who played Dr. Manhattan, uh, on, on The Daily Show, was that all you, or was there a little computer enhancement involved? <laughs> what did he say? He said, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that was that was also the thing with, with Watchmen was you know yeah, since he he gave you the graphic novel to read and you got into it that way and you understood you were you know it's an ensemble cast there's a lot of stuff going on with it you know what kind of reactions did you have to a when you read the graphic novel and then when you saw the finished movie and how did when you thought about the I, I thought it was effect. extraordinary I mean because the the two it seemed like a seamless transition. I mean, quite often you, you look at a screenplay and you're going to go, okay, I see this in my head. And then when you see, when you see it on film, you're, you're disappointed or, you know, uh, hopefully surprised in a, you know, in a good way. And, and this one, it, 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 you know, you read the graphic novel and it was, it, it was almost as, as if Zach uh, was using the, um, the graphic novel as a storyboard at times. I mean, because there were, there were panels that were, Lifted right out of the graphic novel that were on screen, which I thought was a, was a very brave thing to do, you know. I mean, and uh, you know, but there were a lot of, um, I think there were a lot of uh, fans and rabid ones of the of the novel that that needed to be, you know, I don't want to say corded because it sort of sounds like you're bending over backwards just to please them, but but you you know you kind of want to please the uh, the people that are are championing the novel. You know? Yeah, I'm kind of one of those because I bought the 12 issues when they were coming out back in the 80s. Yeah. And the first preview I saw several months before the movie came out, I just sort of sat there and did something I'd never done before. I looked at the screen and just went, that's perfect. Oh, good, good. Uh, that's I mean, that's that, that's great, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and certainly if you've read the novel, I, I think many people would be would be thrilled. You know, yeah. And, and you know, a few years ago when Time Magazine did 100 Best Books of Ever, yeah, yeah, it was on the grand graphic novel that was on yeah, the Yeah, incredible. Yeah, I mean, what, a, what an achievement for, uh, for Alan Moore. I mean, incredible. So, yeah. Um, our time for this morning is coming to close. I want to thank you again. Oh, thank you. you. Uh, but before we go, when I was... Checking up on your bio before you got here, I noticed one of the things that it mentioned specifically was you're a committed environmental activist. And I was wondering why you have a captive audience, if there was anything anything you'd like to draw people's attention to, any upcoming projects, future work? Um, oh, probably only that. It's the Rainforest Action Network. And, and the fact that it's called uh, the Rainforest Action Network is a bit of a misnomer. They, it's not only the rainforest they're, they're uh, championing saving it's it's every environmental cause and they're they're making uh, inroads into into canada and uh, um and it's a it's a great group because they're they they you know it's a lot of uh, a lot of protests and lobbying and they do everything short of uh, criminal behavior although since i've come into the fray um yeah <laughs> Um, they're, uh, the, I think, and their next thing up is is the the tar sands in Alberta. So I, I think that's uh, we're gonna make some noise about that. I think so. That's the that's the sort of next thing on the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Guys.